Just doing a video review on this uh, Mr. Cool. This is the Universal Unit 36,000 BTU. So we installed this in a new construction home. It's about uh, 1,600 square foot per floor. Two inches of foam on the outside and regular two by six walls wrapped. So very, very well insulated. So we went with this unit. We were returning it. We called Mr. Cool. Uh, just very, very poor performance in COP. On the unit, um, as you can see, I'm just doing a video update. So it has been around 30 to 35 degrees all night. We got freezing ice or rain all night long, but it's around 35 degrees right now. And we came back to work on the home to see this. If you look inside, it's hard to tell the phone is focusing. Well, basically it's melting behind right now, but it was frozen ice behind the unit. Right now it's in AC mode. We turned the unit onto AC because it's covered in ice. You can see the ice formation on the bottom and you can see how much ice there is on the side here. We'll just try to show you the thickness of the ice. I don't know why this unit does not want to go into defrost or it doesn't have, I don't know, the programming to understand what's going on. So it's been in AC mode for about five minutes and it's starting to melt off the ice, but its own defrost mode did not consider why its efficiency was so low. It just continued to work. So you can see the thickness of the ice here. When you hit it, I was able to actually break the ice off here, but uh, it's pretty sad, you know, pretty sad performance. I would not expect this out of a unit that's rated, you know, for minus 22 degrees. You can see them on an ice even on top here. And this is in an enclosed area with a roof, you know, over it. Um, just, just poor performance. We we have this home rated for about 20. It, it pulls about 20,000 BTUs at around 30 degrees, maybe a little bit less. And this unit is supposed to give comfortably 36,000 BTUs at that temperature, and it was pulling five kilowatts. To give us around 20 24,000 BTUs and we called Mr. Cool to find out if that was normal and they stated yes because we flipped the toggle switches on the indoor and outdoor unit to a 24,000 BTU limit to make sure we weren't pulling the 36 because we know the load of the house and it was able to maintain its 68 70 degree temperature on the 24,000 BTU setting which should be more efficient because the unit is not ramped up as high as it can go. And it was pulling five kilowatts continuously for days on end. This wasn't trying to hit temperature. This was set temperature. So it hit 68 and it was running at 68. So it was able to hit the temperature and then throttle itself down to maintain 68 degrees. And it was pulling well over 100 kilowatts a day here, which is ridiculous for this house. It should be pulling about, let's say, 60 for heat, just for heat alone. And uh, taking... 24,000 BTUs at 5.2 kilowatts, you're running an efficiency of about 1.6, 1.7 kilowatts per kilowatt consumed, which is very, very poor at a temperature of 28, 30 degrees. Any other unit on the market would give you at least 3 to 1 ratio. Now we're giving this unit back to Mr. Cool because that's completely unacceptable. They state that that's normal. If it was zero degrees outside, I would swallow the fact that it's only running a COP of 1.6, 1.7. Even though any other Japanese unit, Daikin, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, will run you at 30 degrees full blast, it'll still give you 3 to 1. Maybe at 5 degrees, it'll run 2.2 to 1. This unit is nowhere near that. Absolutely nowhere near that. I don't know where they came out of the HSPF of 10 which means it should be running three to one for COP seasonally, but there it's not even running anywhere near to that. And like I said, we called technical support. They stated it was normal. So this is kind of a buyer beware. I understand this is a little hit for Mr. Cool, but when you come up with a HSPF, which is how we bought this unit because the seasonal factor was very good. We're in you know, New York state here, kind of mid upstate New York, I would say 30 degrees average winter temperature, not too cold. This is in North Dakota, like they did their advertisement for. And uh, it just, it doesn't meet any expectations. It doesn't meet any of them at all. It's, it's, it's very close to running straight electric heat and you're paying money for this, you know? So let's see how well it's defrosting. 
Oh, you can see it's it's already starting to come off the walls here. You can already separate the ice, but that's the amount of ice that this unit is built on itself, and it, it wouldn't go into defrost. Now you can see this here. This is probably going to take an hour of defrosting before it's going to melt all of this off here. It's got to be at least half an inch of ice there. So for anybody who's looking for a, a real life review, I will back off from the house. I'll give you a picture of the house. So this is this is a brand new home, brand new home built in upstate New York. It's about 1,600 square feet per floor. We're heating that upper floor and the furnace is down there. Now, mind you, that's a ICF foundation. So you got two inches on the outside, two inches on the inside of foam. So it's a very, very well insulated basement, which means it's Delta T. It's heat load for the basement is going to be practically nothing. It has to bring it up from about 55 degrees to 70. So most of the heat load is coming up from the upstairs because upstairs is just, you know, it's not getting any heat from the ground at all. And this unit is supposed to maintain that temperature, which let's say the capacity wise, it's able to do it, but it's not efficient at all very 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 inefficient i would compare it to an early 2000s regular heat pump ac unit that people would have on their homes the regular square ones let's say carrier or train where they could heat but it wasn't very efficient now mind you again i'm saying this is not extreme temperatures they show this unit running you know a minus 27 degrees i don't know what that thing is pulling it might be running worse than straight electric heat at that temperature we ran it for multiple, multiple, multiple days here on scene, maintaining 68 degrees. I'm, I'm confirming again, this was not trying to reach the temperature where it was running full blast. It reached 68 and it sat at its set point. And at that set point, the unit was still pulling five kilowatts, right around 4.6 to 4.8 kilowatts per hour. We had a uh, meter on the unit to maintain 68 degrees and at a 24,000 BTU setting. So you can calculate it yourself, 24,000 BTUs pulling five kilowatts. Each kilowatt is 3,400 BTUs of heat at straight electric, a resistance heating. So when you divide that into 24, you end up with about a COP of 1.7. Now this is not running at 36, it's rated at 36. So if you ran this unit at 36,000 BTUs, it would be even worse because the unit would have to be running at a higher load that's running at let's say you know mid mid range load so just buyer beware if somebody's looking to install one of these i would highly advise against it we're going to be switching to lg uh, because they give you actual performance levels at different temperatures this unit gives you none of that it gives you a seasonal factor and you're going to be hoping that the seasonal factor is going to be true but this unit has a very, very, very poor actual efficiency. I don't know how the seasonal factors is given to you, maybe at a temperature of 45 to 50 degrees. You go with LG, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu, Daikin, you're gonna be happy with it. You get this unit, you're probably not gonna be using it.